Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalom Lawson with your daily update. Coming up on today's bulletin, elderly people in Bulawayo complain over what they say is an erosion of their cultural values. Concerns are growing about the state of under-resourced public libraries. An a cappella group takes to the stage in front of excited fans. And we have action from a close encounter in the Women's Soccer League. Elderly people in Bulawayo are concerned about the erosion of cultural values which they say are being forgotten by younger generations in favour of Western ideas. Yunus Ferezai picks up the debate for ATV. Elders in Bulawayo have bemoaned the loss of culture, saying this is now evident with more young people shunning their mother tongue. Some elders and traditional healers are blaming parents and too much freedom for eroding local African values. Young people, as a result, are now shunning their own language, food, and other African cultural practices. ATV spoke to some elders who are also blaming Western television programs for influencing young people to shun their own culture. Eh, <laughs> Another resident said there is need for the young and the old to interact more and share experiences. The youth are the ones that actually they are growing in an environment which does not give them an opportunity to, to seek advice from the elders who can actually give them the background of the African culture. Like now, a lot of people, a lot of these old people, some of them, they have, they have died. Some of, some of them now, they are actually living in absent poverty because of economic conditions. So you find that there is no interrelationship between the young and the old now. Jabulani Bebe, an elder, said herbal medicines were useful in the past and people lived longer than they are doing now with modern medicines. King Lobengula's grandson Paul Zwide Kalanga Kumalo said chiefs are supposed to be custodians of culture, but they do not have much influence today. They have adopted new modern ways of surviving because they need to survive within a country. And they are the only ones that any nationality would have depended on continuously as custodians of culture. But the fact that they have also moved into modern democratic systems, the tendency is that they have lost the culture themselves and therefore the people have lost their culture. Reporting for ATV in Mulawayo, Zimbabwe. <laughs> A lack of resources, reading materials and new library technologies are some of the major problems facing public libraries in Bulawayo. Crispin Tavora visited a city library to find out more. Bulawayo's Metropolitan Public Library is in a sorry state and users are calling on the council to take urgent steps to revamp the library. Windows are broken and the building needs a leak of paint to make it appealing to users. The library also faces a shortage of books and learning materials. ATV caught up with school children who were attending a study session at the public library and were appealing for studying materials. It has helped me in different ways. One of the ways I've learned more vocabulary in English and right now in school I'm excelling well. And I'd like them to improve and put in more books which are with action. I'm, I'm personally a chess player, so when I look for 
chess books, I don't find them. So I think they should also include chess books or any other sports or any other board games. There are not enough tables and chairs to accommodate the number of students who are actually coming now because of the increase in the number of O-level, A-level students, the university students who are doing uh, like programs like UNISA and ACA, you know. So I think the library is actually small. The Bulawayo Public Library Management Committee has since embarked on a fundraising program. The chief librarian appealed for more braille material to help users with disabilities. We want to get computers that maybe are for the software for the, for the visually impaired. Okay. Therefore, the JAWS systems and stuff, we want them to be able to take heavy library experience like any other person, even a person who okay. can see. So we want to improve this section, beef up the section, add computers, uh, maybe we we'll get radios. Uh, because we've got some audio books that they can so we, have a, we want to have more radios for them to listen to some of these books that they can't read since they can't read Reporting for ATV in Mulawayo, Zimbabwe an a cappella group have thrilled audiences in Bulawayo with their unique brand of singing Melody Muguti went to watch the band in action <laughs> Bulawa, your base family voices a cappella group is taking a cappella to a whole new level by introducing dancing skills to the genre. And as the group went on stage at a concert which was held recently, the crowd went wild with some whistling and ululating. Sample for the ball juggler also threw fans with dazzling performance. The spokesperson of the family voices, Ronald Sitole, said it was humbling to get such an ovation from the crowd. I really feel humbled by the presence, by the number of people that came to support us. This is our first concert, as you know, and you know we really didn't expect such an, an attendance. Group members said they need more capital to enable them to expand their work in the music industry. We don't need actually five or ten years to become big. Uh, as, you, as you saw yourself, the talent is already there. What is needed is just a sponsor to, to finance us so that we can reach our goals and dreams. Another group member, Michael Sibanda, said he got the inspiration from another a cappella group. I basically got my inspiration from... Uh, a group in the United States called Pentatonix. It's a group um, comprising of one girl and uh, four boys. And um, other than that, um, I'm just inspired by the music that I hear like every day, Christian hip hop and, and, and stuff like that. Antivirus a cappella group and Quiet Race dancing group were also performing at the concert. <laughs> Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. In women's football, Inline Academy and New Orleans fought out a tight 1-1 draw in Marange Diamond League encounter in Bulawayo. Melody Muguti was there for ATV. 
Inline Academy maintained its third position in the Marange Diamonds League after a 1-1 draw with New Orleans at the match played recently at Bam Sports Club in Bulawayo. Inline Academy took the lead after its players scored a penalty in the first half, sparking celebrations from its fans. New Orleans retaliated with a score 20 minutes into the second half after a spirited performance. New Orleans coach was upbeat about the performance of his charges. I'm very pleased. My girls fought very hard. I think it was a game plan to just come in and collect just a point. Because we are playing, because in line have got so many stars. Some of them are in the national team. Shadrach Mlauzi, the coach of Inline Academy, admitted that the game was very tough. Well, the, it was a, a good game by all standards. We all knew that uh, this game was going to be a tough one. Uh, we dominated play, really, with the lion's share of possession, also with the lion's share of chances created, and uh, in standard situations where I felt really my guys should have done a lot better. Some players sustained injuries, something which points to the need for more support in the provision of first aid kits to the struggling women's football teams. <laughs> Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. That is all for today. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.